Crocodilians as a whole are typically thought of as tropical animals, but in actuality that isn't always the case. So what happens when these scaly reptiles have to live in habitats that occasionally get below freezing, and how do they cope with the snow and icy environments that they've in a few cases willingly adapted to live in? Well, the ways in which these creatures have evolved to cope with their own brutal winters is actually quite incredible. So let's figure out once and for all what happens when the world's modern day dragons have to face one of our planet's deadliest challenges, that being a proper winter. North Carolina, we're here at the Swamp Park in Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. Just amazing survivors, and, uh, and this is just one more example of that. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, while there's a few different species of crocodilian that can be quite cold tolerant, by far the most well known is the American alligator. While these creatures are most commonly associated with the swamps of Florida and Louisiana, they could actually stretch as far north as northern North Carolina, and they were even once historically found throughout southern Virginia. Even though these alligators are restricted to the coastal regions of these northern states, that still does not prevent them from experiencing some quite cold temperatures. North America as a whole is known for its cold fronts, with cold air from Canada oftentimes being pushed as far south as Florida. And when these cold fronts hit some of these more central to northern states, such as North Carolina and Virginia, it could often lead to some quite freezing conditions. In some cases, with it even dropping below 32 degrees, allowing for ice to form and for it to snow. So how do these cold-blooded reptiles, which aren't even capable of regulating their own body temperature on their own, cope with such a problem? Well, it's actually as simple as it is complicated and fascinating. While alligators do hibernate, it's certainly not in the traditional sense when it comes to the American alligator. Most animals have an incredibly strict ci cyclical... Most animals have a very strict time of year in which they do or do not hibernate, but the American alligator instead chooses to hibernate based on its environmental conditions. Under normal circumstances, when it is relatively cool out, as long as the sun is out, they could simply just bask in order to heat themselves up and keep their bodily functions going. But once the air temperature drops into the 40s or even lower, this simply isn't an option anymore. And because of that, they have to retreat to the water. While water can of course freeze over once it drops below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, typically it's the surface of the water which freezes over, not the entire body as a whole, assuming that's an actual problem proper lake or river. This allows for a warmer bottom layer to form in these sorts of aquatic ecosystems, which is why fish could survive year after year in frozen lakes. In turn though, because unlike many amphibian or fish species, alligators need to breathe air, they instead of just completely submerging themselves beneath the ice, choose to stick their noses out so they could continue breathing while they enter their state of temporary hibernation. Luckily for alligators, they are incredibly good at controlling their heartbeat, and because of that, they could slow down their heart rate to about 3 beats per minute, making hibernation a relatively smooth process as adults. Unfortunately though, baby alligators are not nearly as capable of controlling their heart rate compared to their older counterparts. So when it does get particularly cold, these baby alligators either go into burrows created by their parents or they simply freeze over and pass away. This is why breeding populations of alligators don't naturally occur in Appalachia or anywhere north of southern Virginia. Even then, it's still debated if alligators were ever breeding naturally in southern Virginia in the first place or if instead it was adults moving up from North Carolina. In a way, something similar happens in South Florida, not with the American alligator, but instead with the American crocodile. American crocodile babies are incredibly sensitive to cold snaps, but the adults, while also being fairly sensitive, can adapt, and because of that, adult American crocodiles have been found going all the way up into Central Florida on multiple occasions, both historically and in modern day, but it's currently believed that no American crocodile has ever reproduced in Central Florida due to just how severely the cold snaps affect their young. Also, alligators have the advantage of having significantly more glucose in their blood compared to crocodiles, which makes it so that their blood is significantly more cold tolerant compared to that of many other reptiles. This trait isn't just exclusive to the American alligator, but it's also shared with its Chinese counterpart. The Chinese alligator is also known for living in a primarily temperate environment, with their historic range once stretching all the way up into Liaoning, China, and possibly even North Korea. 
While they don't live this far north in modern day, that doesn't mean this species doesn't occasionally come across some fairly cold temperatures. One place which they still do live at is the swamps surrounding Shanghai in modern day. During the peak of winter, these swamps will typically reach a high of about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, with lows at night sometimes going down into the 30s. Because of this, the Chinese alligator, like its American cousin, needed to find its own way to adapt, though it decided to choose a very different method. While American alligators also occasionally dig out burrows, the Chinese alligator takes us to a whole nother extreme. In some cases, creating full-on tunnels in which they dig deep into the ground in order to create their own ideal warmer shelter perfect for hibernation. While it's not entirely known, they likely go through this method instead of doing what the American alligator does because of their smaller size and because Asia tends to have more consistent winters, which is also why the Chinese alligator tends to have a more traditional hibernation. Regardless, they aren't the only known crocodilian that burrows in order to combat the cold. The much larger Nile crocodile lives across Africa, and while most of its range is tropical, in southern Africa, temperatures could actually also get below freezing for short periods of time. Between their brighter colors making it harder to absorb as much sunlight, and the fact that they have significantly less glucose in their blood, the Nile crocodile is at quite a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to dealing with the cold compared to the two true alligators we talked about before. Surprisingly though, these crocodiles are extremely adaptable and have came up with their own method in order to deal with this problem. They can dig burrows up to 40 feet long in the riverbank, sometimes going up to 8 feet deep, making these crocodiles some of the best burrowers of not just any reptile, but really any vertebrate. The burrows themselves that these crocodiles create can be up to 20 degrees warmer and in some cases even more than the surrounding air temperature above. And on top of that, these crocodiles, similar to the American alligator, are more than capable of slowing down their heartbeat to a point where they could essentially hibernate for a brief period of time. After all, crocodilians have the gift of having one of the slowest metabolisms of any large animal, with some individuals being capable of going a full year without eating, though such occurrences are not exactly ideal, let alone comfortable. Overall, it really is quite impressive just how adaptable crocodilians are, but regardless, they still have their limits. Pretty much every year in the United States, crocodilians, mainly alligators, are released in places further north than they are supposed to be at. Because of this, every year released pet alligators unfortunately die from freezing to death. This is why you don't see alligators in the sewers of New York City. So really, no matter how adaptable these reptiles are, they are far from immortal, and most of them don't exactly enjoy the holidays. But hey, at least if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like, maybe subscribe, because I try to make animal mini documentaries every single week, and I really hope you learned something new, or at the very least enjoyed. With that being said, hopefully I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.